What's up guys? Arden here with Yellow House Aerial. It's been a quiet few years. I'm in the middle of moving for the third time since I stopped making videos regularly, but it's a bit of an occasion. The Inspire 3 is out. Courtesy of the fine folks at Petapixel, I have a copy of the Inspire right there, something like that. And uh, today we're gonna answer a few questions about it, take it for a flight, try out some RTK, see the accuracy of that and just answer a few questions that folks have. There will be a video on the Petapixel channel which I will put in the description. Look forward to that. Last night I was reviewing the video that I did. I'll link this also in the description. Everything wrong with the Inspire 2. There was about 24 things that I didn't like and it almost seems like DJI went through that list and solved pretty much everything on the list. It's a little eerie. So this remote is littered with buttons. Um, and bugs apparently. There are, there's L1 through 3, R1 through 3, these are all programmable. If you're curious, C3 and this scroll wheel is how you tilt the FPV now from um, Inspire 2. It was C1 and the right wheel, but this is C3 and the left wheel. ProRes is included without buying the raw license. This is new from the Inspire 2. We go over here to codec and we will go ProRes 422HQ. That is included. You will see notably absent from this list is 4444XQ. There's no option for that. This aircraft does not have the RAW license, so if we go ProRes RAW, codec not authorized. There's a really cool option, just super quick for a Super 35 crop. Full frame Super 35, so every lens you can punch in and still shoot 4K. Because the native ISO of this camera is back up to 800 with a dual to 4000, this is a little more sensitive than the X7. The X5S was kind of like that, uh, native 800 ISO, but because of that, an ND18 will be pretty standard on any kind of sunny day. Degrees shutter speed uh, is not enabled by default. We'll go to camera settings. You'll have to do this. This sort of looks like a gear, I guess, and you go angle mode instead of speed mode. So speed would be 1 1 25th, angle mode would be 358 degrees, but we're gonna change that, obviously. All right, another common question. Can you power an HDMI to SDI converter from the USB-A on the RC Plus. Yes, you can. So this is into USB-A. The A is powering this Decimator MDLX. HDMI is going to the in on that. And then out, we have SDI up to a small HD here. And uh, that's our picture. We're on SDI 2. There it is. We also got RTK chilling in the back there. Kind of a busy flight path here. I'm just inside controlled airspace, but we are going to power on the RTK. So the RTK uh, comes with a tripod or I think you can buy it separately. Make sure that it is level. And then it's a WB37 just like Crystal Sky Ascendance into here and then you'll just hold this power button for a couple seconds. There it is. It's on. That's all you have to do as long as you've set this to mode 5 broadcast. There's instructions here on how to change the mode. So now that the RTK system is booted, we're gonna go ahead and set that up here. I've already paired the RTK. You'll just boot it up and you'll find it for the first time. DRTK mobile station. I'm not gonna use network RTK or anything. We'll go status here. It will search and it'll just take a second. It'll find the RTK. Tap that. Gives you the check mark. We'll go back. And once we're here, RTK connected, data not in use. We will enable that, and it should just take a moment. Home point updates, and we are back to normal. So you can enable and disable RTK mid-flight. If you like, it'll go back to GNSS positioning. We can toggle to the FPV cam with the C2 button, bottom left, whichever one that is, C1 or C2. Hit that, there's FPV. Hit it again, there's video. If we hold C3 and we use that left wheel, should tilt down the FPV, there it is, and tilt back up. Do forgive my crazy hat. We are a thousand meters above sea level here, so the UV is more intense. Um, it's quite high today, and skin cancer's no joke, and I just really hate the sunscreen. So I'm gonna take the Inspire 3, somewhere there, uh, for a flight. I got my Nav Canada clearance, we're okay to go. RTK is enabled. The RTK, there is a warning in the menu that says do not move the RTK station if you are going to repeat emission. So do not show up, program an RTK mission, 
come back a week later, put the RTK box somewhere else and replay that RTK mission, you will have a bad time. I'm gonna do a bit of a hub and spoke. So I'm gonna put the aircraft nice and low over the landing pad and then I'm gonna go up to maybe 20 meters, 30 meters. And there's a bit of a structure here. There's an art installation and I'm gonna put the crosshair right on the installation. The camera is going to be straight down and we're gonna go from landing pad to a corner, to a landing pad, to a corner and back. And we will look at the repeatability and see how the accuracy is. So I'll fly this once and set the waypoints and then I'll fly it again and the aircraft will do it autonomously on um, basically playing back the mission at a set speed. Sorry, mosquitoes. And we'll see how accurate it is to come directly above those corners that I set. So now that we've got that waypoint set recorded, we can set the speed. I'll set it to six meters per second. We're gonna leave this default FPV follows route direction off. You can choose 3D dolly if you want. I'm gonna leave it on repeatable routes. I'm gonna leave the ASL alone, uh, ellipsoidal height. Um, route, route type turns before waypoint flies through or curve route, aircraft continues. I'm just gonna leave it on the default and return to home. No, I want it to exit task when we're done. There's also some more complicated camera settings. You can set the gimbal yaw and gimbal pitch throughout. You can also add actions to start recording, stop recording, take a photo. So you can choose the waypoint, start and stop recording. There we go. So you would go waypoint five, action, stop recording. Finally in uh, settings here, there's a little gear. You can rename the flight route. So give it a name that will be clearly identified and that you can remember. Also remember where you put your RTK station, that's important. So when you're done playing with the waypoint, you wanna hit save on the far left here and that will bring you back to the list and you can then hit execute. So I'm gonna get the aircraft in the air and we will do that. And start. So there's waypoint one. Here we go off to waypoint two. Let's see how close it gets over that. Oh, it missed. Okay, it's flying through them. So it kind of puts it through like a Bezier. Wow. That was really close to actually hitting some of the structure. So it does not fly them like a star point, like you would think. It flies through the waypoints and then back. So it rounds them out. It doesn't do them in a straight line with hard edges. Let's see how close it gets to the final point here. And there it is. I would say it's as much as a foot off. Not bad, but not great. And if it's going somewhere I don't like, I'm gonna hit the big orange pause button on the RC Plus. Three, two, one, pause. Boom, it just locks it in the air. So if you hate it, the orange button is almost your emergency stop, we'll say. It's worth noting that automatic landing gear is enabled by default. I disabled that, I like to do it myself because sometimes I like to fly low and I don't want the landing gear to start changing on me. Also, the obstacle avoidance on this aircraft is state of the art. Um, I have disabled obstacle avoidance as well just because I like how the aircraft flies a lot better without the avoidance and I will take care of avoiding the obstacles myself instead of relying on the aircraft to do that for me. Side note, just got checked out by the Calgary Police Service. He was very nice. Uh, hi, Paul, if you're watching. Documentation, licensing, everything's in place. I have clearance from NAV Canada to be here. So of course, no problems. I showed him the aircraft. He checked it out. We talked about it a little bit. Nice little meet, and he got on his bike and was on his way. I'm sure this is gonna be a janky edit having not made very many videos at all in the last couple years. We're gonna go ahead and do a hover noise test because the Inspire 3 props have a little, like a fillet, a little winglet on them. Hopefully that reduces um, the vort vortices that are on the edge of the wing and reduces the noise a little bit. It sounds mostly the same. I would just say it's about as loud 
about as heavy of a noise, but it's a little bit less annoying. Cue the clip. I would say they didn't get everything right. There are a number of things they changed. Obviously, with change comes improvement or with improvement comes change. They changed the case for the lenses. Um, it comes with a case in the Inspire 3 kit. It doesn't come with any of the lenses. You have to buy them individually or the full set. But this, we need to talk about this case. Uh, if you open this case the wrong way or if, it's, if it gets bumped or something, you're gonna yard sale these lenses everywhere. Somebody's bumped my X7 lens set before and they don't fall out, um, these would. So the testing I've done today has been more technical side and we're gonna do more real world tests with the Petapixel team, with Chris and Jordan. And so that will be in the video again, link down below. For now, I'm gonna show you guys a straight flight with the X7 on the Inspire 2, just level, just a couple feet off the deck, and then we'll do the same thing with the Inspire 3, and we'll see if there's a difference in the bounce considering how stable the Inspire 3 is. This is about my fourth or so day out, day and night, out with the Inspire 3. Flying it just now, getting a little bit more experience with what it's like, I would say it, it flies low like it's on rails which is really nice um, it's very confidence ins inspiring it flies very level and straight the downward facing sensors have really been tuned um, and same with that dual GNSS antenna makes it smoother to fly in uh, smaller areas overall it's great I would say it's a little better in a lot of ways and there's a lot of creature comforts included in the Inspire 3 I wouldn't say it's night and day leaps and bounds above the Inspire 2. The Inspire 2 is still a very valuable aircraft um, and does a lot of things that you would need it to do. So anyway, there will be more information coming in the review with uh, Jordan and Chris from Petapixel. Look forward to that when it's ready. If this is published before or after, I will put the link to that in the description. Thanks for watching. My name is Arden Shibley for Yellow House Aerial, and I will see you sooner or later in the next one.